So in a previous video, we have talked about how lipids are digested and how they turn into carboxylic acids and glycerol. And so now we are going to talk about how carboxylic acids are proceeded after this. So carboxylic acids are then transported to mitochondria thanks to the enzyme carnitin. This enzyme is often used in a pills for fat reduction. So if we have a lot of uh, this enzyme in our body, then we are transporting more carboxylic acids into mitochondria and it's degraded. So we are losing fat, but it's not really healthy to lose it this way. So they are transported to mitochondria thanks to this enzyme, which is naturally synthesized in our body. And then they are proceeded in the matrix of mitochondria in the process of beta oxidation so we should know that beta oxidation is a cyclic process in which carboxylic acid is degraded into corresponding amount of acetyl coenzyme a so here we have a uh, palmatic acid which is a uh, carboxylic acid with 16 carbons and during the process of beta oxidation it's turned into a corresponding amount of acetyl coenzyme a which is this molecule that has two carbons one here and one here so from the logical assumption, we are getting eight times acetyl coenzyme A. So if we are getting eight times acetyl coenzyme A and every spin of the cycle shorts the previous palmatic acid uh, by two carbons in the form of acetyl coenzyme A, we have to short it seven times to get eight acetyl coenzyme A. So this cycle runs seven times and during each cycle we are getting one NADH and one FADH2. So we are getting seven times NADH and seven times FADH2. So if we want to translate this into gains of ATP, we have to know that one ATP is used to activate the process. So that's minus one ATP right from the beginning. And this acetyl coenzyme A goes to the Krebs cycle. And from one acetyl coenzyme A in a Krebs cycle, we are getting 12 ATPs. So we get 12 times eight ATPs which is 96 ATPs. So from each NADH, we get three ATPs in the process of cellular respiration. So we get three times seven ATPs, which is 21 ATPs. And from each FADH, we get two ATPs in cellular respiration. So that's 14 ATPs. So the total amount of ATP gained uh, from degrading palmitic acid is 96 plus 21 plus 14 minus 1 ATP that we used at the beginning to activate the process, which is 130 ATPs per one molecule of palmitic acid. In comparison, for example, from one molecule of glucose, we are only getting 38 molecules of ATP. So from that, we can assume that degrading fats uh, gets us a lot more energy than degrading uh, saccharides. So now we are going to talk about process of beta oxidation. All right, so we have this uh, carboxylic acid, which in this case is palmic acid with 16 carbons. And we have to activate it by adding this coenzyme A. For this, we need energy and this energy is provided by ATP. So we gain energy by uh, dividing ATP to AMP and two separate phosphates. So that's the ATP that we are using, as I mentioned. And coenzyme A is added to the molecule of carboxylic acid by subtracting this OH or hydroxy group and by subtracting this hydrogen from the coenzyme A. So now that we have activated this molecule of carboxylic acid with this coenzyme A, we can start the process of uh, cyclic beta oxidation. So we have four reactions, first of which is dehydrogenation, where we have FAD ripping away these two hydrogens. 
So we get this double bond right here while forming FADH2. So we have formed this double bond right here while ripping away those two hydrogens and we gain one molecule of FADH2. In the second reaction we have to deal with this double bond and that's by adding water H2O and that's why this reaction is called hydratation. So what happens we have H2O which looks like this and we are adding OH group here and one hydrogen here so here we have again two hydrogens. One thing that I forgot to mention is that all the important reactions that we have right here are happening on the third or beta uh, carbon so the every important reaction happens on beta carbon. So that's why it's beta oxidation. All right, so let's move to the third reaction, which is again the hydrogenation. However, in this case, we are not using FAD to subtract those hydrogens, but we are using NAD plus. NAD plus and we are getting NADH and H plus and basically what happens is that we take this hydrogen right here and this hydrogen right here forming double bond here which we have here and here and we are left with this molecule and in the last reaction we have to tear apart the molecule of carboxylic acid as i mark it in this place and it's done by a molecule of coenzyme a so another molecule of coenzyme A comes right into this spot, tears apart the molecule into two parts. And this molecule that we have right here, it's acetyl coenzyme A. And this, the second molecule is activated carboxylic acid, which has uh, two less carbons than the previous one that we have started with. So it has 14 carbons. Okay, to sum it all up, we started with carboxylic acid with 16 carbons. We ended up with carboxylic acid with 14 carbons after the one cycle of beta oxidation. In the process, we've gained one NADH, one FADH, and one acetyl coenzyme A. As I've said before, with this carboxylic acid, the process repeats it seven times. So we get this FADH2 seven times, this NADH seven times. And after seven cycles of beta oxidation, we get seven acetyl coenzyme A and one that's left over. It cannot be divided into any less parts. So we get eight acetyl coenzyme A's.